Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be the start of a weekend vlog. Y'all ready? Your girl's ready. Let's get into it. So, it's Friday night, September the 9th, and I don't even know what I'm doing, but <laughs> I really wanted to do a weekend vlog because that Labor Day reading vlog just like really motivated me to get some reading done. And this month is crazy and I gotta get some stuff done. <laughs> so, what am I doing? Um, please ignore this makeup, honey. I mean, it's been like an all day thing. I'm like, it's like down in here. <laughs> anyway, so Chris over at Books and Jams was doing some reading sprints, so I participated in some of that tonight. Just love her reading sprints. They are great. If you've never participated, make sure you check those out. And then I kind of did like, I started it, and then I had to go to a Bible study, and then I came back. So I did my Bible study, my Zoom Bible study call. Um, really love that. Took some notes in my notebook here, my little Aaron Condren notebook. Love that. Have my Bible here. And... We just talked about, we've been talking a lot about the sealed word, which is like you, they didn't understand the prophecies and everything versus the opened word. Um, and just talking about um, spiritual blindness and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, really great study tonight. Uh, speaking of Bible reading, I'm going to get some reading of John done this weekend. I really haven't read much John this week, to be honest with y'all. Transparency. So, you know, I never made it past John 1, and that ain't good. So, we getting, we getting at it this weekend, honey. My goal is to get John 2, 3, and 4 read this weekend. That's just, you know, and even if I don't finish it for this month, I'm going to just love going through it, everything about it. Then I pulled out my John scripture journal. So, definitely going to be working through this. We'll see where I get to. That's okay. Like I said, it's even if I don't finish John, I want to just at least be working constantly through it. It's fine. I just want to try to get through some more Bible reading this weekend and really encouraged. So, really fast, before I talk to y'all about some books I have read, I want to tell y'all about two books I got in the mail today and a book I pre-ordered. So, Sky over at Sky, <laughs> to her YouTube, I'll link her below, recommended this book, Boundaries, uh, When to Say Yes, How to Say No, and to Take Control of Your Life. And... Your girl needs this, that's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah. <laughs> got this. I also got a really sweet gift from Pepper Basham. Y'all, the Mistletoe Countess. Yes, ma'am. She saw my video and where I was talking about Authentically Izzy. And she messaged me and I asked if I had a copy of this. And she so kindly sent this to me. So, thank you, Pepper. I just love this. I cannot wait. Um, and, y'all, beautiful Christmas. I, I'm seeing a, a Vlogmas vlog in my future with this book so you already know so anyway speaking of authentically izzy your girl's fired up about it uh i'm gonna be on her launch team for that it comes out in november next is my video where i read the synopsis it was actually really funny because when i read it i was like yes there were so much true statements in the synopsis i was like this is me and so i'll link that in the card if you ain't seen it but she was so kind and she commented on my videos and that's how this happened. So, um, look at that cover. Gorgeous. So, hey, I'm so excited to read this at Christmas time. A lot of you all had recommended that book to me, and I'm so blessed. So, I cannot wait to read that. So, so I did pre order a book that I normally don't pre order, like Christian nonfiction. I don't know. I just, I normally don't. But this one right here, y'all, speaking of boundaries, good boundaries and goodbyes. Loving others without losing the best of who you are by Lisa Turkhurst. You already know. I love me some Lisa. And yeah, I'm here for this. The ch I mean, when you pre-order it, you get like a digital journal and it was like, um, oh, what else? They sent like the first three chapters for you to read, um, like a preview and like the audio and some other digital stuff. So yeah, when I look at the titles of the chapters, me, honey, me. I think this comes out in November. So, as far as reading, I did finish a book today by Kim Vogel Sawyer. It's a new release by her, and I just love her writing style. So, I give this book four stars. Uh, Still My Forever. I should have said that already. Still My Forever by Kim Vogel Sawyer. Uh, I talked about this in I was Anticipated, I believe. Um, but I had an advanced reader copy from NetGalley and finished it today. 
And this was just a cute second chance historical romance. It's set 1905, Kansas, in a Mennonite community. And our main characters are Gil and Ava. And they were previously engaged. And Gil left to pursue his dreams for music in New York City. And now he's back for summer. And it's like, are they going to get back together? What's going to happen? And there's a lot of details in here. If you're a music lover, you're going to love this. I don't want to talk too much about it. I want to save most of the discussion here on this. Um, for like my mid-month wrap-up because I feel like I've already talked to y'all about all the books I've read so far this month and uh, I'm going to be talking about a few more here for the weekend. So, we're going to save that one a little bit. Um, but yeah, and today my video come out for the giveaway. Beneath the Bending Skies. I can't talk. Beneath, beneath, beneath the Bending Skies. Beneath the Bending Skies with Jane Carpatrick. Love this. I already, if you ain't seen my video, I'll link it in the card as well. Uh, giveaway is still open when you're seeing this video. It's going to be open to until Friday. And on Saturday, I'll be filming who wins. So, we got that. So, the, the book I'm reading right now that I'm like halfway through that I plan to finish tonight is Beaches Bungalow. <laughs> Caitlin at Pride and Paperback recommended this to me, and I'm loving this, y'all. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this is a cozy mystery, a camper cozy mystery. Um, basically, our main character is Mae West, and she is like kind of like this high maintenance woman, I'd say, but she don't have a bad personality about it. Like she's not stuck up about it, really. She's just her been her lifestyle. She's like had lots of money because she married to a rich man named Paul. And honey, there's some stuff going down. <laughs> Basically, her and Paul ain't together no more because the FBI done raided, raided their house. They both went to jail, had to prove that she wasn't involved. So, there you go. Um, yeah, he was in on a Ponzi scheme, and so he went to jail. And so, he pretty much didn't give her nothing. She didn't have no money. She kind of out on the out here. Like, we don't have nothing left for her. And it, the only thing left for her is this campground with an RV campground okay they call this campground happy trails and y'all when I say I was dead <laughs> reading some of this it was hilarious like she goes there and she has like this um she <laughs> has this, I'm sorry y'all this is hilarious if you like cozy mysteries you go like this but she goes there and she has like this this uh, brochure. I'm trying. What's the word? I'm in marketing. What's the bro what's the word? It's a brochure and it like it's like 20 year old brochure and she's like kind of excited to go there because it looks like all nice and all these people in the brochure honey she gets there and it's like ain't nobody here <laughs> what is this and so she's like oh my gosh what have you done like why do i have this what am i supposed to do with this and so the people that live there in the area are like they don't like her because they didn't like her husband paul he didn't pay the people he was supposed to be of course he was in a ponzi scheme he cheated people out of money and so, they don't really care for her either, but May is there basically trying to figure everything out, and she meets a few ladies, and they're, like, talking about trying to fix up the place. She's talking about selling it, just trying to do better for the people in the community, so I really like her personality, okay? I'm loving May's personality. She's wanting to change her life, you know? Uh, but... I mean, this is all in Kentucky. I don't even know if I said that. This is all in Kentucky. Like, she had to take this RV all, like, two or three hour drive to Kentucky. And, honey, she didn't even know she had to plug in the stuff for the RV. <laughs> RV. I was dead. Uh, not spoiler, just funny, you know. And um, when she gets there, somebody said uh, the, the, <laughs> the Southern references. I ain't never heard this, but she said, somebody said to her, <laughs> the saying, confused, I wrote it down, as as a cow on AstroTurf. Honey, we in the South. I just love it. And so, we got all those, like, Southern innuendos and just sayings and vibes. Loving it. And, um, like, we don't shake. We hug. That's another thing, you know. I wrote that down. And, uh, you ain't from around here, are you? That kind of stuff. It was, this is good. So, or not from around these parts, that kind of stuff. Honey, she still didn't, she didn't know how to do laundry. Like, these people trying to show her all the stuff. Well, things go crazy, honey. Like, things get real crazy. This is not spoiler. This is, like, literally just, like, what happens because it's on the back. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. But uh, <laughs> the whole plot here is that, you know, she is pretty much not with her husband no more. He went to jail. She's trying to kind of start over a little bit, best she can in the situation. Next thing you know, her ex-husband, Paul, shows up dead floating on the water. Honey, everybody's like, what? 
<laughs> everybody in that town pretty much wanted him dead and but yeah she like the main suspect so that's pretty much everything goes on from there and we just trying to figure out who did it so yeah your girl is like right here we about done so i'm loving this thank you caitlin for this recommendation because i got the next two three books in the series i'm reading this for series september it's, I had to go back and find it, but this is my prompt for let's get it started to start a series. So this is book one in her series. I don't remember what, it's a Campers and Criminals Cozy Mystery. And there's like 30 books. Is there 30 books in this, y'all? <laughs> 29 books in this series. I'm dead. <laughs> Your girl ain't never gonna get them read, but it's just fun. Um, Whenever I wanna pick up a cozy mystery, I'll pick this up. And I just love how, like, the artwork on the cover is really nice. And these are just cute little books that have. These are all, all on Kindle Unlimited, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, every one of these is on Kindle Unlimited. So, great. This sound, seems like it's going to be a great series. It is clean. I've not seen any language. Like, this is clean and funny. And we even had some mentions of going to church. Hey, I mean, yes, ma'am. So, I, I'm enjoying this. I'm probably going to give it four stars, you know, just because, like, I, it's hard to write a cozy mystery five stars, honestly, but unless it's, like, really going to blow me away. But I'm really enjoying it. So, yes, for real. Um, What, what else am I doing? Uh, so, yeah, planning on finishing this tonight. And then after I finish that book, I've got to start to win a prince by Tony Shallow. It comes out next week. I'm on her launch team priority for the weekend got it on my candle um and yeah we're we gonna get that red and then after that wistress also comes out next week by nadine brands brand days i gotta look up how to say her name but i did pre-order that because i have to have that in my possession just because of that cover honey i'm just telling you right now all right so so right now i'm going to respond to some youtube comments before i do any reading um yeah, you girl needs to get back on the response today. I've not responded all day, and I have so many comments to respond to. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, short. I and, by the way, thank you all for subscribing to my channel. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. But, um, 725 subscribers right now. Y'all, my heart, I love y'all. I just love y'all. We had a lot of new people here on the channel um, just so thankful for each and every one of you who has supported me on this journey. So just like a quick thank you for that because I just love y'all. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and respond to some YouTube comments and I'll check back in with y'all in a little bit. Okay, it's 10 o'clock and I'm just now got caught up. I'm responding to the comments. <laughs> I love all the comments. I love all the comments. So many of those comments made my day. I love you guys so much. So yeah, okay, now it's time to go and do some reading, reading. But first. Peanut. Hey y'all, just an update. It is Saturday at like three o'clock <laughs> and I've not updated y'all at all. And your girl passed out last night, so I was so tired. Um, but, uh, I did finish, I just finished, so I'm behind on my reading. But Beaches, Bungalows, and Burglaries. 
y'all, this is a lot of fun. You know, just same thoughts that I had before. Uh, just a really fun, clean, cozy mystery. Southern vibes. Just, I enjoyed this so much. The mystery is kind of like, okay, I figured it out. First time I ever figured it out. So, you know. This is still fun, and I'm going to give it four stars. Uh, I can't wait to read the next one. So, this was awesome. So, yeah. I love that our main character of May and what she decided to do at the end. And I just, yeah. So, I went and got some groceries this afternoon and had some football on today. So, I've been watching some SEC football. Y'all already know. And, oh, okay. <laughs> This is not good. And now uh, I've got to start reading To Win a Prince by Tony Shallow. So that's coming up next, y'all. That's coming up right, next. y'all. So it is like 9 o'clock at night. Kids in the bed. We got Peanut sitting here in the chair with me. Hey. Hey, P. Uh, reading To Win I'm reading To Win a Prince. Been watching some football. Lots of upsets today. Crazy stuff. Um... Yeah. At least, oh my gosh. <laughs> At least Arkansas won, Tennessee won. So it's a pretty good day on our side. But anyway, I am really enjoying Twin and Prince. Like, Tony Shallow, <laughs> I'm only on, I'm only 8% in. I don't even remember what chapter says. Four or five? Anyway, it's good. Like, this guy basically is ripped of his title because, like, the first chapter says, the whole prologue says that his half-sister, Deo, which is Bree's ex-secretary, used him in her schemes to attempt to overthrow Bree as the rightful queen. So, he came clean and, like, confessed to all this when he realized that the next step was going to kidnap her. And so... He did not realize everything sounds like, like, what was going down. Um, he willingly basically shared the reasons that she wanted to wear the crown instead of Brie, but he was still found guilty on conspiracy charges. So, there's that. So, his name's Econ? Econ? I don't know how you say his name. Econ? We'll go with Econ. And he is like a prince, and now he's been stripped of his title, honey. And he mad. <laughs> so he like, <laughs> he's, got, he's sitting here like, these peasants. He's not saying peasants, but he's basically acting like a commoner. <laughs> he's calling people commoners. Like, he's mad. So he's having to work with Iris, which is uh, Brielle's, Bree's, whatever, from the first book, that's her best friend. And so, so Brie is pretty much like doing her own little um, business here. Let me go back. I highlighted what she exactly said. Um, I can't remember. Okay, yeah. It's her mission is to clothe the world in sustainable fashion using resources and skills of the area. Uh, it says the name and I can't hardly pronounce it. So we'll just say of the area of the town. Will. And she said, um, they, ad they adhere to the highest standards of fashion and they leave resources for future generations to thrive in the fashion industry. So she said that she's a firm believer that the Lord wants us to be the answer to so much of the heartache in the world today. What we have is meant to be shared. No one is blessed so that their only their lives can be enriched. Yes. Amen, honey. So like, I'm really enjoying like everything with that. So like, he, the guy, the guy I'm telling y'all about, I'm all over the place, what am I saying? But the guy, Econ, he is having, since his, he was got in trouble, he could have went to jail, it could have been this whole thing, they could even have the death penalty kind of thing, but he ended up actually getting this community service where he has to help Iris in her business. And so he's all like, I just don't eat, eat I just don't eat anything. Like, he's all like, he bougie, you know, honey. <laughs> I need to sit up. He bougie, he, he don't want to have to... <laughs> it's funny like bro you're gonna end up growing i know i'm sure he'll end, he'll end up what was that he'll end up i'm sure that he will end up changing his ways you know but like the first few chapters he's just like <laughs> he's like i did not she's asking him if he wants some lunch and he's like thinking wonder where she going i don't eat just anything <laughs> Look here, bro. Uh, I love this. I love this. I can't wait. Like, 
we I need to see him get out of this because <laughs> reasons. Um so yeah. I don't know. I'm loving it. I loved Tony Shallow's writing. I love the continuation. It's like addictive to read. I'm just, it's so easy to get through. Um, like I said, I've just been sitting here reading it and I'm loving it. So anyway, I love it on my Kindle so I can like highlight things. Uh, that's one thing about the NetGalley stuff. It's like, I love that I can at least highlight things and export my highlights and take notes without having to like write anything down. Anyway, that's what's happening right now. I've been watching some football. Nine o'clock. Just gonna try to read through this the rest of the night. Not much of a vlog, I know. I didn't really do anything today, but it rained all day. Went to the grocery store, is about it. You know, <laughs> watch football. Chatted with my girls today. Just a really good day. And um, yeah, I'll check in with y'all in a little bit. Well, I just have to say the faith content in this book, top tier. Like, I just, I love that. Iris is saying, Lord, please forgive me. Help keep my faith at the forefront. And saying this prayer for Econ, Econ, whatever his name, however you say it. Um, yes, this is what this is about. I mean, like, that's what it's about. Yes, ma'am. I, I just, I had to film an update. Y'all know, I'm like, it is what it is. Um, I love this. I just love this. I love, like, I can't wait to see his transformation, y'all. Like, I know it's going to be good. I just know. Her writing style's great. Just, just 10% in, honey. How much faith we've already had. I love it. morning y'all it is sunday and i just as you saw like this morning's been crazy it's 10 30 so uh <laughs> i don't even know what i'm saying so this morning uh before i even had my coffee i was cleaning this morning as y'all can see got the dishes going we had um just cleared everything off trying to get ready for an early morning bible study and I did a little time lapse, but I spent honestly probably two hours doing some Bible study this morning or longer. And so, um, yeah, I, I just, y'all, my heart. So I need to share <laughs> what's on my heart right now because this, let me tell you right now. So I used the scripture journal. This is Hosanna Revival. I can't remember where I got it. If it was like day spring or somewhere. I can't remember where I ordered it. But um, I don't even know if it was Hosanna Revival's site or not. Maybe it was their site. I just can't remember. Anyway, I have all the Gospels in this, and I've never actually used it. So um, I need to go back, and I started using this after I already did John 1. So I need to go back in and write some notes there. But we did John 2, 3, and 4. So I got through John 2, 3, and 4. Did some highlighting. This is the ESV. And then I also did two three and four in my nlt study bible so 
um, read it twice in two different versions and I love doing that because I love, like I said before, I love to compare versions and see like what they're saying and get different things out of it. And so also took notes <laughs> here. So in my notebook here. So we got John two, <laughs> three, two, three, and four. And four really ministered to me the most. And I'll tell y'all here in a second. One, two. All right, y'all ready? <laughs> I love being able to just talk about the Bible with y'all. My heart is full. So, um, I haven't gotten into this just yet, but I want to read the Bible first and then I'll look into this. Um, so John 2 is where Jesus is turning water into wine. This is the first time that he revealed his glory to his disciples. And then we go to the temple and Jesus is not happy. They have turned his father's, his father's house into a house of trade that's what the esv said and then nlt called it a marketplace so um yeah he said get these things out of here he could see that there were merchants selling cattle sheep and doves for sacrifices he saw dealers at table exchanges for money tables exchanging for money um and so he makes a whip from some robes and chased them all out of the temple he's like get out of here <laughs> so um because they had made his father's house into a marketplace and which should be a place of worship then the jewish leaders they are demanding like what are you doing if god give you the authority to do this show us a miracle miraculous sign to prove it and jesus is like okay destroy it destroy the temple and in three days i'm going to raise it up and they're like what this took like 46 years um you can do it in days and then jesus actually meant his own body um, um, after he is raised from the dead, from his, um, crucifixion on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. And the, it says the disciples remembered he had said this and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. And then we go into Jesus and Nicodemus. A lot of people know about Nicodemus. And he's a, and Nicodemus is like a religious leader, like a teacher of the law, the Pharisee. And so he, I just love this reminder of salvation, born being born again. And Nicodemus kind of takes it literal, like, how can you really be born again? But Jesus explained to being born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of us. And that is just so profound. And I love that he takes the time to explain this to Nicodemus. Like, he took that time to explain this to a Pharisee. Um, and, and I love that. Like, they had a really good conversation, a long conversation, which leads us up into salvation and just talking about how the Lord, how God gave his son, Jesus, on the cross for us. Um, and as long as we believe in him, we will never perish. We will have eternal life. And he sent his son not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. And I just... Sometimes you don't have words. You just don't have words, like getting emotional. But just knowing that all we have to do is come to him because of what he did, right? Just knowing that. I, I, I love I love it. I just, okay, I'll keep going. We ain't even to the Samaritan woman, okay? Let's keep going. Um... <laughs> Just like, I'm not even talking about this. Sometimes I don't even have the words and the emotions just start to come out. You already know. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we'll go ahead and uh, one thing that's in my study Bible. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Okay, I'm just all over the place with this. But um, it talks about, from a salvation standpoint, let me read y'all this. Many of us have heard the phrase born again, referring to the process of salvation. But imagine what Jesus' words must have sounded like to Nicodemus. He had always assumed that the way to God's kingdom was through strict adherence to the numerous complex codes in Jewish law. But Jesus told him that all he had to do was be born again. Who had ever thought, heard of such a thing? Yet the analogy is profound. A physical birth takes place in blood, pain, and unparalleled joy. In spiritual rebirth, the blood is the blood of Christ. The pain is the confession of sin. And the joy is the assurance of eternal life. 
As a doctor said, after delivering yet another child, every single one is a miracle. God is waiting to bring us a miraculous spiritual birth in each of us. And I'm like, that's all I can say. I mean, praise God for that, right? Like, praise the Lord that we have this spiritual rebirth. No matter what we have done in our past, he is with us. He forgives us in our sin and he we are made new a new creation in christ he saved us and i love it <laughs> i just love you thank you lord it's just you know you praise him for that all the time i praise him for that all the time just so thankful for him so then we go the last part of chapter three john the baptist i love what he said here i love what john said he says He's, he's over here baptizing people and then Jesus starts baptizing people and like then it, it's like questioned the John's disciples are like questioning hey what this man over here is um, also baptizing people everyone's gonna go to him instead of us and John says no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven I'm all uh, you yourselves know how I how plainly I told you I am not the Messiah I am only here to prepare the way. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride, and the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Y'all, the fact that John, like, just like the ultimate, it's almost like your best friend. Like, just like that analogy of, you know, these, his, his disciples, John's disciples were over here saying, hey, this man, the Messiah is baptizing people and they're not going to come to us. And John says, hey, that's okay. He, he's the Messiah. He's the one that I've been saying and talking about. He's like, it's just like if you're your best friends getting married, I'm going to be joyful at their, at their success. And he is the one who is greater and I must become less. And love that just love that so much um what a beautiful just analogy there now okay now we can go into the samaritan woman because my heart of the samaritan woman y'all the samaritan woman now john four jesus and the samaritan woman i was crying reading this talked to chrissy about this chrissy this is her favorite in john i just she has ministered to my heart this morning i love you girl we were chatting about this and y'all I read this for the first time today I mean I ain't never read all of John like I read parts of John but I've never read it through and through and my heart's been really ministered to um I know everybody start a lot of people start with John but your girl never did and I'm thankful I'm reading it right now because my heart you guys I mean let me just say so the Samaritan woman. Everyone knows the story. If you've ever seen The Chosen, it's a beautiful depiction of it. Look it up on YouTube if you haven't. The Chosen, Samaritan woman, whatever that is. <laughs> You'll, I cried. Like, I, I just cry. Like, the, the emotional status there. Like, so Jesus goes to Samaria. They're at Jacob's well. The disciples have gone off. They're not there. And so, at this time, and you think about back then, the Samaritan people were not to mingle with the Jews. They did not want anything to do with them. And when Jesus is sitting there and tries, she goes, she's going to the well to get water. And he, he asks her for a drink. And she's basically like, why are you talking to me? And because he's a Jew and Jews don't talk to her. And she doesn't feel worthy that someone's going, a Jew would talk to her. And she says, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Why are you asking me for a drink? And he, Jesus says, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. And then they have this conversation about where would you get this living water? Um, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob and who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than this? And Jesus says, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. And she's just like, please, sir, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. She's asking for it. Uh, so I won't have to come here and get the water. And so she's thinking, you know, this, this actual water. And so he says, go get your husband. 
And then she says, I don't have a husband. And he says, I know you've had five husbands and the man you're living with is not your husband. And she's like, so you're a prophet, right? Like she starts saying, why is it that you Jews insist that we have to worship in Jerusalem only? Like we have nowhere to worship. The temple is the only place we can worship because, you know, if you think back to the Old Testament, the temple pretty much was like the holy place of worship. And so that's still what the Jews are saying in this time period. And so the Samaritans are not able to worship there. And so they feel, she feels like she cannot worship properly because of what they have said. And I love that Jesus is talking to her, first of all, because she feels less than, you know, and he found her worthy. Think about it. He found her worthy to talk to. And um, he says, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews, but, but the time is coming... Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And that just... <sighs> Y'all know. I mean, in my heart. And so she says, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called the Christ. Um, when he comes, he's going to explain everything, you know, and she, then he, Jesus specifically says, I am the Messiah. He reveals himself to her. And so, um, she's like, what? Oh my goodness. What's happening? And so she just, then the disciples are coming back and they, they, they're just like, um, shocked to find him talking to her. And she leaves her water right there and says, come and see a man that told me everything I ever did. Is he the Christ? Could he possibly be the Christ? And so the everyone in the village is like coming in. Like she's like telling everybody. And that's what he wanted. He wanted everyone to know. He revealed himself to her. He And what's, what's, what's crazy about this, y'all, is like, y'all, think about this. Think about this. Jesus specifically sought out this woman. And this was, like I said, this was a time when, like, Jews didn't have any dealings with Samaritans and all of that, right? But she was so important. She had had a hard life. She had five husbands. Her life was just crazy. And she probably felt shame and just didn't feel worthy. And yet she had faith in God and Jesus was just like not even phased by what she was had been through. He could see her heart, he knew her, and he went there. He made a point to go to Samaria for her and just to explain the spirit and truth that true worship is <clears throat> going to be in our hearts from spirit and truth. And he could just he he could see her. He saw her and um and I don't know, it just, it's so profound because it just makes you think about how important this woman was during that time. And like, she was the only one that he is revealing himself to. Um, and he just demonstrated how much he cared and loved her. And he loves us all, like how much he cared for, he cares for all of us, regardless of our social status. And, and just, it inspires me to just share the good news of Jesus to all of you because he he had a special place in his heart for her and so we can have a special place in our heart for him and <laughs> I got getting emotional but he was so he was just out there looking for her and it's like just like he come there for us he, he knows us he seeks us out and it reminds me of like you know I think about like I said my faith Q&A how he always was coming for me and looking for me and and waiting on me and pursuing me, even when I didn't know it and realize it. And <laughs> yeah, sorry, I get emotional. Oh my gosh. Oh, um, so yeah, y'all already know it's just ministered so much to me. And then Chrissy was sharing her heart to us this morning. She posted a really beautiful reel 
about John 4. And it, this is the first time, like I said, reading this. And amen. He's the savior of the world. And I'm so thankful for him. Y'all, mm -mm -mm. okay. <laughs> we need to move on a little bit. But um, I'm just so thankful for this time with him this morning. I mean, thank you, God, for all that you have given us in your son Jesus and I'm just I'm so grateful so um whoo your girl burning in the eyes <laughs> I love y'all okay so um that's what I've done this morning <laughs> pretty much is being wrapped up in John oh Sheena honey I'm so glad that you said to read John this month I love you girl Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, and I'm loving these little journals because I'm going to have to like go back. I want to go back and add, I left some space so I can add even more thoughts at some point. But like if I want to go back again and I add some more thoughts, you know, like a second time, um, in the future. So loving them journals. And then I'm just been working in my little notebook here. I've been using this notebook a lot that I, I think I showed y'all this on one of my vlogs already. Um, just like where I'm keeping like TBRs and like random lists and book notes and all that stuff. <laughs> so, sorry, I, I keep forgetting to look at the camera. I have such a hard time with that, y'all. Anyway, also I was trying to film and it cut off on me because storage was full. So you already know I got storage problems. And you girl, I had to do something about that. Anyway, what I was trying to relay, <laughs> relay. I'm gonna try to start this this month. Um, just take my time with it. Chrissy loves this, so influence, like I said. And then I'll go to, uh, I'm gonna try to read like every day a little bit. Like kind of like I've told y'all before, it's like, I, I was just such a busy week. I just didn't even make time for my Bible reading this past week and I can definitely tell it. So today my heart is so full and I need every day. I need it every day. So we're gonna be putting that in the time, okay? Whether I gotta get up early, you know, making time, honey. And I'll check in with y'all the weekend. <laughs> Let <laughs> y'all know. Maybe I'll do another weekend vlog next weekend. I don't know. The end of the month's going to be crazy. But And then um, earlier while I was cleaning, I started listening to the audiobook for the Charlene Harris book two in the Aurora Tea Garden. And it's only like, if I list, I, normally I listen on two speed, so it'd only be like a three hour audiobook for me. So I love the cover of this though. Look at this. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, I'm interested uh, just to continue on and see what happens. So um, that, that'll be my audio book that I listen to right now, but I am 20% in on, in search for print, not in search, <laughs> to win a prince. Okay. Okay. What am I doing? I'm 20% in on to win a prince and loving it so much. Uh, like I said, I, this, all my thoughts are not sand and I can definitely tell that this guy is going to start his like, transformation and he's going to be learning. So I'm so glad he'll be knowing real quick. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much it for right now. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try to edit, get all these clips out in here, see how long the vlog is, see how long the vlog is, and go from there. Um, we got lots of cleaning, cleaning to do. Dishes just got done. Going to put them up. Sorry, that was extra zoomed in here. <laughs> We're going to be putting some dishes up. Uh, the, it's kind of in disarray still, but that's okay. Real life, honey. All right, transparency. All right, y'all. I'll check in with y'all in a little while. Y'all, we got the lights back in. Hey, girl, hey. This is gonna be my ending clip because it's um, almost nine o'clock, and I'm gonna give y'all a reading update. But these are not flicker lights. I didn't realize that when I got them. But that's peanut has done been up here. Okay. Well, um, there goes that. <laughs> you can see these are like sticking out. Um, I don't know. I tried to have them taped, but y'all, it's hard to keep them in here. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's a whole thing. Um, but they back. Hey, <laughs> they back. And I just love to have the lights in here anyway. So reading update real fast. Um, I don't want to hold this the whole time. I wonder if I can like set this up here. Let's see. Hey, hey girl. Hey. Okay, here we go. So I got to chapter three on A Bone to Pig by Charlene Harris. So this is the second book that after Real Murders. And I recently reviewed this and I give this three stars and it was just like an entertaining read pretty much, you know, entertaining mystery with some things I wasn't crazy about, you know. But in this story, um, I'm, I'm a little bit more intrigued at the beginning here because Aurora has pretty much inherited like this fortune from a previous 
a member of the Real Murders Society that she was in. And the lady was elderly, so she inherited her house. She's inherited, like, all this money from her. Doesn't know what to do next. And it's kind of crazy. So, the first two chapters are just really, like, setting it up. Now, this synopsis says, Her new home comes as a surprise. A human skull was concealed inside a window seat. Was Jane a killer? Jane being the one who left her all the stuff. The one who died. And so, Ro, the, she, Ro, well, they call her Ro, hides the skull and secretly begins investigating the, the most likely suspects, her new neighbors. But sleuthing is easier said than done while dodging questions from both her new love interest and her discerning police detective X. Um, there's still an unsolved murder and Rose determined to identify both the victim and the murderer before it happens again. So I'm interested. We'll see. So, uh, I'll probably, I'll be, I'm listening to it on audio as well. So going back and forth a little bit and yeah, so read that. And then I read the first chapter in John's story. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, let me just say right now. They couldn't kill him, y'all. Oh my goodness! Uh, this this is a biblical fiction story, um, written by the same people who wrote the Left Behind series. I mean that, and I've never read Left Behind, but a lot of people love that series, and I've got the first five books in it on my shelf. But I got a Goodwill, <laughs> but Chrissy recommended this, like I already said, and y'all, my heart. I mean. They could not kill John. Now, let's just say that. They tried to boil him in oil. Honey, it wasn't happening. So, that's the whole first chapter here was him being imprisoned and them trying to boil him in oil. It didn't happen. Yes. Uh, the Lord is good. People come to be saved by the Lord. Through that experience, John is banished after that. But, hey, I just... I, I, I'm excited. And apparently this is part of like a Jesus Chronicles series. I looked, there's like four Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's like the gospels. I want to read all of these. So thanks Chrissy for the wreck. I'm going to be reading that throughout this month. And then I am 40% in on to an apprentice. So going to read some more of it tonight. Hopefully I'll get to 50% or more. It's getting really fast now, honey. We need to get this done. I love Tony Shallow's writing. It is so good. So I'll do like a full review on it whenever I get finished. But if you've not read In Search of a Prince, make sure you pick that up because honestly, it's one of my favorites this year. I loved it. And this one is not disappointing. <laughs> so just a beautiful continuation. The faith content's good. That guy I told y'all about. Um, I looked up how to say his name. It's really Econ because um, she did like a video where she read like the first little bit on her Instagram. If you're not following her on Instagram, she posts a lot on there. So check her out. But um, Tony Shallow, I just, I'm loving it. He is going to turn it around. I know it. And I just, I love Iris and everything that they're working towards in her business and just like the relationship that they're building. It's beautiful. And so loving, and also loving to get to see a little bit of Brie, Brielle, just from the first book. And so it's good. Uh, I'll talk more about it later, you know, when I do a review. But uh, yeah, y'all, it comes out Tuesday. So you'll be seeing this tomorrow on Monday. So check it out. Make sure you order it. Do it from Baker Publishing. It's cheaper, free shipping, all that jazz if you decide to get it. Um, I need to get physical copies for my shelves for both of both of those books. Um just because I love them so much and they are beautiful. So anyway, peanut. Y'all want to see peanut before we go? That's it. Okay, we just got done eating tacos and all that stuff. And then peanut. Hey, buddy. He crazy. So, um, peanut, do not mess up mama's uh, nice <laughs> lights because I need these. Um, you already know. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> we need you to stay in one piece as well. That's it for this vlog. Hope y'all enjoyed. I know it's kind of like whatever, but I, I just, I had a great time sharing my heart in the Bible study portion. Just, I love this community so much. Um, I want to say to also that Book Talks with Mrs. Thomas really touched my heart today in her video recently. If you're not following her, check her out. I put that in my community tab, but she is such a sweet woman and I just love her heart for the Lord and she is just so authentic in in her channel. So I just want to shout her out as well because um, 
what she said in her video really spoke to me. And if you're not seeing her most recent unboxing, Chrissy had sent her some beautiful book mail. And just what she said in that video really touched my heart. So I just want you all to check her out um, because she's a really genuine person. And I just, I just think she's sweet. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for your support. As always, I'll be doing that 54321 book tag that should come out this week. And I don't know what's up after that, but, you know, we'll just take it day by day. <laughs> so, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, y'all.